From Hollywood, Leslie Nielsen and Susan St. James meet Angie Dickinson and Lloyd Bridges on Celebrity Bowling. and Mike Kogel as they explore the TV of the 70s and 80s through hand-picked episodes of their favorite and not-so-favorite series. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Battle of the Network Shows. This is Rick Brooks, here with my partner and co-host, Mike Kogel. And today we're going to look at something that combines sports Gaming, celebrities, all the stuff we love about television, right? Celebrity bowling. And this is uh, by popular demand. We uh, had posted a little something about uh, about this on Facebook, a uh, uh, screen cap of it, I believe, and asked you if you wanted to, to see us cover this uh, the show on the podcast, and the answer was a resounding yes. <laughs> and so we like to give the fans what they want, and we appreciate you, our listeners, so... We decided, yes, we would watch an episode of Celebrity Bowling and discuss it here on the podcast. And we did, and hopefully we'll roll a strike. Let's hope. Let's hope. It right. is weird yeah. that, you know, a strike in bowling is good. Yeah. A strike in baseball is bad. True. I'm sure, you know, some comedian has done yeah. <laughs> good material on that. A turkey in bowling is good. <laughs> That's right. But a turkey just about anywhere else is, is bad. Yeah. So bowling is a little askew sometimes. Yeah. But that's one of the things we love about it. It is. So, Celebrity Bowling was a syndicated show. Back in the days when original television syndication was more of a thing. So, you might see it on your local TV station, maybe on the weekend, like on a Saturday night, like around 7 o'clock or something like that. And it aired, I was surprised to learn, that it aired from 1971 to 1978. Had a lot more episodes than I thought. I think a lot of the episodes that circulate... They're on various streaming services. They've had a DVD release. It's been on like at least one of the digital sub-channels. Actually, a couple of them have shown reruns of it, I know, lately. So it's it's kind of had... A, and it was on ESPN Classic for a while. Mm-hmm. So they've been around, but I don't know if all those episodes are circulating. Maybe they've just got a little package in syndication. But yeah. the episodes are, are pretty easy to find. It's streaming on Amazon right now. Mm-hmm. Hulu, too? Yeah, some episodes. Some. I don't, uh, at this moment... Um, it, it's, I know I've seen it on Hulu before. Yeah. And I think they've got some free free on YouTube. They have some episodes, right. too. Right, yeah. And, the I mean, the Amazon, how they're laid out seems confusing. Mm. Like, not accurate to, I don't know, what they call it, season two. Might be season four. It's hard to tell. Yeah, you get mixed up when you, especially these syndicated shows, when they weren't necessarily airing at the same time. It just makes the dates go haywire because, yeah. you know, they probably more or less aired in a given market probably in the same weekend or something but uh it was it was once a week and it didn't seem like it was 52 weeks of the year but yeah we do know this was the 100th episode yes uh the very special 100th episode yeah and what a what a cast <laughs> so each week would pit uh two teams of celebrities against each other they generally be they try to seem to try to be like a co-ed aspect to it and we got four good ones uh, today on today's episode, the 100th yeah. episode, Mike. Yep. Got Leslie Nielsen teaming up with Susan St. James against the dynamic duo of Angie Dickinson and Lloyd Bridges. Yeah. So uh, Leslie Nielsen, people would know from Airplane, of course, and uh, the Naked Gun movies, Forbidden Planet, other various things. So Susan St. James, her she was on Macmillan and Wife, is that? Yes. I didn't know that until <laughs> the host referenced it at the end. Yeah, Jen all, all I could think of was Kate and Allie, and I know it wasn't Kate and Allie. Yeah, that was a little bit later. Yeah. Just like, hey, say hi to McMillan for me. Right. She's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't seem real thrilled by that reference, but. Yeah. And Angie Dickinson, I guess, probably would have been a police woman at the time. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, was one of those just celebrity celebrities kind of associated with the Rat Pack and yeah. Vegas and Glamour and that sort of thing. And, yeah, yeah. And Lloyd Bridges. I'm not sure what Lloyd Bridges was doing at the time, eh? 
I don't know, but also an airplane eventually. Yeah, with that's Russell right. Nielsen. That was pretty cool. I, I didn't even think of that when I was reading the names, but as soon as I saw them on screen, I said, oh, yeah, of course. The host is uh, Jed Allen, who I guess was on Santa Barbara. <laughs> uh, I don't really know him very much outside of celebrity bowling. <laughs> I just know he's kind of smooth talking. Yeah, yeah, he's... He's kind of smooth. He doesn't always seem to be totally clear on what's going on with the game, but <laughs> neither were we. So. Yeah, and each and he's got uh, a, to provide color commentary and an actual bowler, mm-hmm. uh, Cheryl Kaminsky in this case, yeah. who's sort of explaining what's going on, sort, sort of. of, and kind of the strategy because it's a best ball format. So the idea is that well, I'm not even going to try to explain this. I, I think because I like, <laughs> we'll see. I did like Wikipedia actually did a good job of explaining it. So essentially, two people are bowling one frame. Okay. Right. Uh, and whichever ball is best from that frame overall, that's what they score. Yes. So, and, and Wikipedia explained it by saying whoever bowls worst in the. So there's two lanes. So say Leslie Nielsen bowled a ball, and then Susan St. James bowls a ball. Mm-hmm. Whoever bowled the worst ball then goes and tries to pick up the spare from the best ball. That's basically it. That's the simplest way to explain it, yeah. but that's not really the way they explained it. No. <laughs> they left out the part about the worst ball. Yeah. It was confusing. Yeah. Um, we figured it out eventually. Uh, and if you get a strike, that you're done, of course. That's that's yeah. your frame. Yeah. So if a bowler goes a strike, the other one can just relax. That's right. Which they keep, had to tell Lloyd Bridges a number of times. Yeah. He, he clearly wasn't clear on the rules either. Yeah, yeah. There was some confusion throughout <laughs> the, the game. And each team is playing for a, a, a uh, has a, a, a civilian that they're playing for. Mm-hmm. And they can get bonuses. Like there's a bonus for the team with the most strikes that their uh, yeah. civilian gets a prize. And if they get a turkey, there's bonus prizes. So there's a whole system of prizes laid out based yeah. on the score. And they're bowling 10 frames each. So right. they're bowling a real game now. And the one we watched, they skipped the six. They did the sixth frame off camera. Apparently, though, those are the sixth and seventh frames are the frames they skipped a lot. So everyone knows those are the lame frames. Yeah, nobody needs those anyway. I honestly didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> so if, uh, yeah, so hopefully they kept the cameras rolling though. So in, yeah. in case we missed anything exciting, they would show it to us. Right. Uh, and the graphics are rather old school. As far as like showing the scorecard, they're basically just yeah. showing like a little generic looking actual bowling right. uh, track. It, it's not it's not a high tech show really. <laughs> no. But the the good thing about the presentation of these episodes is they have the sponsor plugs and tax, so we get to hear what the prizes are. Yeah. Uh, you know the original things like Turtle Wax, one of the classic game show sponsors. So the, the program it's it's entertaining. It's a half hour. It moves fast. It's not really a hectic show, but it, it's only a half hour, so. It just goes fast in that sense, but uh, yeah. I enjoy it. I mean, and, yeah. and why would you not? It combine, right. you know, bowling is the sport of kings, right? Yeah. Celebrities, they're not like us. They're more like royalty. Mm-hmm. So you combine kings and queens with the sport of kings, and you get celebrity bowling. So yeah. what more could you ask for, Mike? I don't know. Maybe some fries to go with it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe some fries or nachos. <laughs> yeah. Chicken fingers. <laughs> Do you think uh, Angie <laughs> Dickinson uh, rented bowling shoes from the alley? I wanted to see her shoes because she uh, she had some she was really good bowler, but she fell down a lot. Yeah, she had a couple of uh, stumbles. So down I kind of wanted to see if she had like on heels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause she, in Police Woman, she wore like did she wear heels or like boots or something? I don't think she wore heels. Uh, <laughs> and they're bowling like in an actual AMF lanes, but I guess yeah. they've got they're just two lanes. They get kind of a tight setup with two lanes kind of side by side, and they're just using those two, but. I get uh, something. The Wikipedia said it like set up the lanes in the studio. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that would make sense, but because um, there's a studio audience, yeah, and you only see the two the two lanes. So okay, so they set up like a mini bowling alley. Yeah. Okay. A studio audience, including. I stand corrected. Ernest Borgnine. Yes. Or as could... celebrity bowling likes to call him, Ernie Borgnine. Yeah, and he's just sitting there, and they never acknowledge him in this one. No. <laughs> he was he, talking a little bit with the. the Leslie Nielsen and Susan St. James team. Yeah. He was on their side. It's a relaxed atmosphere. There's, like, a lot of chatter and back talk, you know, talk back and forth. I wonder if, like, they, you know, maybe filmed a number of episodes at a time. Yeah. Because a lot of times, like, if you read them, 
descriptions, it'll be like at least one or two people carry over between episodes. Ah, uh, right, right. Or maybe he was just a fan. <laughs> yes, uh, I like, like a that. bowling fan. I want to go watch some bowling. Yeah, he's just a fan of bowling. Yeah. So he just got a front row seat and paid right. like everybody else <laughs> <laughs> to see some, some bowling action. That'd be great. Oscar winner. Yes. Ernest Borgnine. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's rather relaxed and they're, they're playing for fun. Yeah. And they're civilian partners, like I said. But I like really relax. I mean, because the, the, the Jed and Cheryl, I mean, they're sort of announcing it, but they're also talking to the people. Right, while the, the action's right. going. There's just like constant chatter. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And it's mostly them. Yeah. You don't really hear the celebrities a lot. Yeah. That's sort of an odd part of it. You're not, you're watching them, but you're not like hanging out with them. Right. Exactly. Yeah, there's a little distance there. Yeah. They seem to be enjoying, at least in this episode, they seem to be enjoying themselves, but they also seem a little bewildered by what's going on. Like, yeah. they're just like, okay, just tell us where to go and we'll just roll the balls, but right. not really engaged in the the competition aspect of it. No. I mean, they're happy when they get good shots. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the women seem to be taking it more seriously. That's a good point. Definitely, anytime Susan St. James bold, she would get a very serious look on her face. Yeah, she seemed to be focusing, definitely. Yeah. Angie Dickinson was a good bowler, had several strikes, but she seemed to be just going up and looked like she was winging it. Yeah. <laughs> and she had this like big gold-like heart medallion that yeah, was kind yeah. of swinging around, which is kind of distracting. Maybe it <laughs> added to the impression that she was just flinging it out there. But Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and Leslie Nielsen was heckling Lloyd Bridges a lot. He was, yeah. Yeah. That was entertaining, but yeah, and, and sometimes Cheryl Kaminsky is giving like, I guess early on she gives Susan St. James some advice like, Susan, remember to keep your elbow tucked in or something <laughs> like that. So yeah, it's 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 an interesting atmosphere. Yeah, for sure. And and sometimes they would have like themed episodes like the Brady kids against each other, mm-hmm. and, but most of the time, you know, they weren't. There's no carryover to like another episode, as far as I know. They were just each episode is a self-contained episode. Yeah. <laughs> so. You, know, you don't have to worry. You can jump in any any point in the middle. It's obviously a, a relic of its time. Like all this about the the bowling aspect, the celebrities on here, the the things that they're wearing. Mm-hmm. You know, like bell bottoms and, and whatnot, and yeah, uh, wide collars. Yeah, but also just from a television aspect. Yeah, this is the kind of show. There's been attempts to put it back on, and mm-hmm. but you just can't can't beat it. But just the kind of thing like oh, you just tune in, like I said, like on a Saturday night and see celebrity bowling that's syndicated on. Throughout the country, it just yeah. seems like a, a weird thing that wouldn't be done now. Yeah. And you never know who you're going to see. Yeah, that's probably part of the fun of it. Yeah. But I mean, you're probably going to see Ernie Borgnine because he probably, probably <laughs> was hanging out there all the time. <laughs> One way or another, you're going to yeah. see him. You know, in this episode, we had people from film and television. Mm-hmm. Or people who did both. Like, what was Leslie Nielsen doing at that point? He was probably doing a lot of Gesh, like, Columbo-type shows, right? Yeah, he'd been in, like, a... Boy, I guess a couple of years earlier, he had been in, like, uh, The Bold Ones. Mm. Like, it was a kind of an umbrella show. And I think he was uh, in the, uh, was it The Lawyers? Or no, it was the, the Police segment, I think. The Bold Ones Police. Okay. So, that was a few years earlier, though. So, I think you're right. He was probably making guest shots on a lot of uh, a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what Lloyd Bridges was doing. This is <laughs> well at, you know, before Airplane, but right. maybe I'm missing something. as well after Sea Hunt. Yeah. So... I don't know. I know there's another one where he uh, he bowls with Bo Bridges. Oh, that's a, s- a special yeah. occasion. And, yeah. well, whatever he was doing, he seemed happy to be here because he's always yeah. got, every time he bowls, he's got that sort of like half smile, half grimace. <laughs> like pretty much every time, right? He's got that, that yeah. standard expression he uses each time. I, I kind of get a kick out of that. And you think maybe he was uh, still sniffing glue then? <laughs> Well, it wouldn't have been a good week to stop, I tell no. you that, <laughs> with everything that was going on in this match. Uh, that's all the pictures that are popping up on IMDb right now. Of, of Lloyd Bridges sniffing glue? Not sniffing glue, but airplane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lloyd Bridges sniffing glue. Can you do a Google search on that and see what no. we can find? <laughs> I think I'll know exactly what we'll find. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I don't want to necessarily spoil anything, but his... Uh, his performance starts out rather weak and then improves dramatically over the course yeah, of the, yeah, good point. the episode, I would say. So, mid-70s, uh, looks like mostly uh, movies. He was in Death Race. Mm. Stowaway to the Moon. Stowaway to the Moon. Yeah, and then like, yeah, some police 
story. Like a guest shot on there. A couple guest shots on that. Oh. So he was doing TV. 1975 and 1976, he was the lead in a show called Joe Forrester. Joe Forrester. Here's hmm. Joe Forrester was a cop. I'll bet. A uniformed cop. A hard-boiled uniformed cop. Salt of the earth type. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> like to relax every now and then at the bar after a shift. Yeah. But a Beat cop day. Joe Forrester walks the mean streets of Los Angeles. Hmm. hmm. Uh, also starred Eddie Egan, Dewan Smith, Pat Crowley, Barbara Rhodes, Ted Garrett. I don't know. Barbara Rhodes. Uh, okay, so it's, it's basically... Marilyn Manson? Marilyn Manson? Mason, sorry. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, well, and two episodes of Jim Backus. Oh. Two episodes of Dick Butkus. Oh, okay. Yeah, we might need to write this down for... We should explore this a little more. Joe Forcer. Joe Forcer. There's two R's. We'll do a little research. Well, three on R's this. all together. Let's get the crack research team on this one. Yeah. I was gonna say it looked like it was Lloyd Bridges and a bunch of people that would never be on Celebrity Bowl. <laughs> Seems like some of the guest shots made it. Richard Basart made an episode. Okay. Uh, Lloyd Bridges called all his celebrity uh, markers Jeff, in. Jeff Conaway. To to help him out by with an appearance on Joe Forrester. Yeah. George Dezunda. Wow. What network? Is, does it say what network is on? No, it doesn't. I'm guessing CBS. Well, now it would be maybe ABC at the time. Yeah. Uh, let's... NBC. NBC. Well... Joe Forrester was introduced on an episode of Police Story. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so it was... The episode, The Return of Joe Forrester, premiered <laughs> in Police Story's second season. Wait a minute. <laughs> the Return of Joe Forrester was the debut of Joe Forrester? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, I don't know how to handle that. Oh. And then they spun it off for a season. I mean, it has 22 episodes. Okay, well, they gave it a shot. Yeah, Eric Estrada was on it. Well. A lot of guests in Robert Ginty. Robert, oh, the great Robert Ginty. Robert Ginty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Regular listeners of our podcast uh, will understand what we mean when we say it was the 70s, NBC, <laughs> we should have known... The show didn't last very long. We should have known this was an NBC show when we right. didn't didn't know anything about it. Yeah. So, listen, we know what he was doing around the time of this. Okay. Yeah. Now that's another thing. I'm, I now that you mention it, um, there wasn't like a, there's a little chit chat, but there wasn't like a big segment where they sit, they take them aside and no. like, so uh, Susan, tell us what you're working on, or Lloyd, uh, tell us about Joe Forrester. You know, they didn't yeah. do that. Right. I don't remember that in other episodes either. Yeah. Like it's at like, the end, there was like the just. A, smidge yeah if they have time yeah but they don't have like a dedicated thing in the middle when well, you think like after five frames at the halfway point they say yeah, yeah, yeah leslie yeah. why don't you tell us about what you're working on right as a courtesy to the celebrities for showing up in bowling i think they would do that but yeah do you think leslie had uh discovered his his like uh you know spark device yet <laughs> he's famous for yes because i was just thinking while we were watching it boy it would be a perfect thing to break out in a bowling game to heckle someone right or like, uh, you know, <laughs> when Susan St. James is getting into her crouch and yeah. about to bend over. Somebody would probably drop a ball, <laughs> ball on a toe like Fred Flintstone if that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that kind of device would not be out of place at many bowling alleys, I would, no. I would venture to I say. I mean, that's, you know, that's not good form. No. Like bowling in the lane next to someone who's already bowling. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad, bad form. Or walking across. I mean, there, there's a little loosey goosey with some of the the bowling etiquette in this episode too. Yeah, but definitely. I didn't I didn't see Leslie Nelson doing anything like that, but yeah. I did enjoy what he uh, right after Lloyd Bridges bowled. He, he stepped over the line. Was that a foul? Yeah. <laughs> I guess he meant it in jest. I think so. Uh, I believe he was confused as we were a little bit. Uh, someone did a seven ten split, and they just they left a seven ten split. Yeah. Uh, no, right. They just. They the, just immediately rack the ball, or oh yeah, yeah. The, the the people running the thing, yeah, yeah. The they were like, "There's no, there's so slim a chance of getting it." Yeah, it's a ninety nine percent chance yeah, uh, that whatever the other person got was going to be the low ball. Right, so they didn't even bother to wait. Yeah, okay. right. And he it sounded like he was questioning that too. Yeah, he gave up though. Yeah. Then at one point they started. He's like, "Ah, oh, don't explain it to me." <laughs> <laughs> he just goes and sits down. <laughs> He didn't really want to know. Yeah. Unfortunately, they didn't have Wikipedia then to, to 
look up the rules like we did no. <laughs> so we could finally understand the thing. Yeah, so... I'd like to see it, like Leslie Nielsen and Lloyd yeah. Bridges hovering over Yeah, it. yeah, and then... <laughs> An iPad, like all like, of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then, John, hey, you guys got it now? Oh, yeah, yeah, it explains it really well right here. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, let me see that. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Apparently, the bowling action is more important than the celebrity plugs, which is good. They mm. they respect the sport of bowling yeah. on celebrity bowling, I would say. Yeah. Uh, While still coming up with this unique form of it. Yes, the best ball format. Yeah. Uh, would you, Other than the fact that you did, we didn't understand it for <laughs> about 15 minutes, do you like the best ball format? I guess what... Why? I think for that kind of show, it helped. Yeah. Like, it sped things along. That's a good point, yeah. Because you, you couldn't have... Well, I don't know... I, I I'm trying like when you bowl like you do a team bowling you just alternate frames right yeah yeah right so i mean that that wouldn't take any longer yeah they really. could have just had each person just bowl separately but i guess this yeah. way you get to see both celebrities and uh maybe this oh here's one thing it, it encourages higher scores yeah which i guess is good for like the prize system right because if you're using best ball you're not going to get you're yeah. guaranteed at least something hopefully not this episode. So <laughs> there are a couple of goose eggs, but yeah, I guess it it, it uh, lifts the scores a little bit and yeah. speeds things along. So okay, yeah. I think other episodes they've probably explained it better, but yeah, this yeah. one just confused me a little bit. It was, yeah, it was a little confusing. I don't want to speak ill of anyone on the show, but someone was not good at explaining stuff. No, but uh, that someone was not a. To be fair, was not an on-air professional. No, was brought in from the. Right. The world of bowling. We're talking about Ernest Borgnine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say anything. Yeah. It's terrible at explaining. Yeah, yeah. He, he did not lay out any of that information well at all. <laughs> and Jed Allen, he, very self-assured. Mm-hmm. He seems confident. He's he not always explaining things very well either. No. But. And, yeah, not always on top of what's happening. No. Other than that, he's a good host. <laughs> <laughs> as far as, like, swagger and persona, he's got that part down. Yeah. Knowing the game and, and maintaining the flow of the game, not so much. Yeah. Nice head of hair, too. Yeah, yeah, you look good out there. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best things was when they showed the prizes. Yeah, the prizes are great. Yeah, do you, maybe you can read some of those off. Now, we, we didn't write down the, the entire pitch of them, but... Uh, no, no, we can get you the idea. Maybe yeah. you can fill in some of the details if, if anything jumps out to you. Yeah. Now, there's a little contradiction because I think, I think there's... At first, they said, like... If it's up to 120, but they made it sound like it was less than or equal to 120, mm. but then the next prize was greater than or equal to 120. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I heard that twice, that <laughs> 120, I don't know if you get two prizes or what, but right. That, that right there was another discrepancy. But yeah. Uh, the lowest tier is a Lucien Picard watch. Men, men's or, or uh, bow. Was it two yeah. watches? Men well, they weren't, really, they weren't really clear on that either, yeah. but. And they didn't even show the watch, actually. No, they, they showed, showed the, the logo, the, the corporate logo. <laughs> right. <laughs> but Jed Allen made it sound real nice. Yeah. When he read off, you know, it, I don't know what he said. He, it keeps good time and yeah. <laughs> fits around your wrist. I don't know. With a name like that, it's got to be good, right? Yeah, exactly. That's their slogan, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at, uh, now, greater than or equal to 120, you would get a, a, a silver tea service set by Leonard. Yeah. And, man, that looks snazzy. It did, yeah. You could see like a that would be not be out of place in a in a British castle. At a, at a, right. That was nice stuff. Yeah. Greater than or equal to one fifty, you have a choice. Samsonite, your choice of Samsonite silhouette luggage, mm-hmm. very fine luggage, and they had two yeah. different colors to in, choose from. In olive and new fall colors. <laughs> yeah, they were gorgeous. Yeah. And of course, Samsonite. Strong luggage, you know, right. that's not going to get smashed up. No. You could drop a bowling ball on that stuff, and it would be, yeah. be fine. They should have said that. Yeah. <laughs> they should have Jed Allen, like, dropping a bowling ball yeah. on it. Like throwing a suitcase down the lane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Uh, or, the other choice was, now this is the, the thing that stood out to me. I, I, people-powered vehicle. Yeah. PPV, a pedal car. It runs on pedal power. So you can step into ecology with both feet. <laughs> and they show a couple in this. Right. And, and what did you call it, basically? Uh, first, I called it a giant tricycle. Yeah, which is a good description. Because, I mean, it's a three-wheeled 
pedaled vehicle. Yeah. But it does. Ha- it has like a, a a body of some kind. Yeah, it's like, like a, a you're in a thing, a hood almost. Or, yeah. yeah, you're enclosed like the top half of it. Yeah, but I, I imagine it's a little bit like a not quite a recumbent bike, but a ah uh, yeah. You know, but there are things like that where you're just I guess a recumbent bike. You're sitting anyway, but you're sitting up. The other kind of comparison would be like a paddle boat, but with wheels. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. They should really make it amphibious. Yeah, they should. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ride it down to the the park and then ride right into the pond. Yeah, and then all you'd have to do is put a rocket on it, and you got land, sea, and air covered. <laughs> I was kind of surprised that that was in the same tier as the luggage. Yeah, but d- have you ever seen a picture of anybody uh, in one of those uh, things? No, I've never seen anything like and that. And did it look like? I mean, I guess you would. Would you take it down to the beach? Would you take it through the park? I mean, yeah, cause the is that street maybe. ready? Like they were in the. It looked like they were in a park. Yeah. The, the, couple in the still it's like a recreational thing like riding a bike or something yeah. i guess and you know the ecology part yeah you save uh fun yeah <laughs> maybe they need to bring these back i don't know if those caught on <laughs> yeah i don't think they did yeah if they did it was before they my were, time in dc they they were having ppv tours yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's lines of these things riding around it could be town. very romantic yeah Nothing more romantic than doing your own work, driving yeah. yourself around. Uh, it is. It's so two side by side seats. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like a, a uh, like a sidecar. Yeah, but, it's but not, it and it's like, also not like the you know the two person bikes. Right, like a tandem tandem uh, bike. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was interesting, and the people in the picture, the still picture they showed, they looked happy. So they did. If yeah. there are any testimonial, it's a nice prize. Yeah. So the next level is one eighty. So if you get one eighty or above, you also get your choice. And this is interesting. Uh, okay, first of all, an, uh, an Amana radar range. So it's basically a microwave oven. Yeah, it's like an early microwave oven. And you can avoid all that wasted of, you know, cooking, heating up a whole oven yeah. and wasting all those, you know, heat molecules or whatever. Right. You got a much more efficient setup with this Amana radar range. Yeah. Now, on the same level as that, your choice is either that or a, a complete fridge and freezer unit from Gibson. And as Jed Allen tells us, he refers to Gibson as one of the white consolidated industries. <laughs> what? I'm hoping that white is the name of a uh, a manufacturing giant of the day. Because that didn't make yeah. any sense to me. No. There's certainly... <laughs> like, what does that mean? Why, why would you be proud of that? <laughs> Maybe they rebranded it. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen a Gibson refrigerator either. No. But... Uh... Yeah, maybe <laughs> they had to rename the the whole thing. Yeah, I think Amana was like the turtle wax of appliances back then. But yeah. Gibson, that's that one's new to me. Yeah, it looked like a, a lovely uh, appliance, though. It did. It was like big side by side fridge, freezer. So yeah, what I find that funny is nowadays you can find a microwave for like forty bucks, right? <laughs> but you can't find a fridge like that for the same price. No. So yeah, definitely like you said, an early microwave and. Yeah, they put that in the same level. Okay, now, if the team that's bowling for you gets 210 or more, which apparently it has happened, but they didn't come anywhere close to this on yeah. this one, folks. You get a month-long Mexico vacation. Yeah. With like, we're presuming a week in each spot, but there's two like Holiday Inn hotels and two, I forget what the other chain Americana. was. Americana. Like, Americana, yeah. yeah. So a week in Toxco, a week in Guadalajara, then Mexico City, and then Acapulco, and... You get it nice, like a nice suite or so. I mean, that seemed like a really great prize. Yeah, a month long vacation. Wow. Right. And seeing like all these tourist spots in Mexico, so that was that was pretty cool. It was. I was impressed with the show for offering that. Me too. But they probably didn't have to offer it very often. Yeah. <laughs> didn't, didn't redeem a lot of those, I'm guessing. Right. <laughs> now, the team with the most strikes in the game. So this is this is guaranteed to be given out each episode. Mm, that's true. If assuming somebody gets a strike. Ferris Slacks, an assortment of Ferris Slacks. Yeah, we get to see a cool kind of upshot photo of three dudes posing yeah. in Ferris Slacks. Yeah, there's a little plaid in there, I believe. Yeah, and... yeah. I think maybe, <laughs> maybe like a white or something. Yeah. Like some other light color. Yeah. And then maybe like a brown or yeah. some dark color. But I mean, it, it looked garish despite the colors not being particularly garish. No. But it was, <laughs> it stood out right away. Yep. Nice high waisted slacks. Yeah, the upshot uh, perspective didn't. Uh... And I think the 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 slogan was something like, 
almost as good as tailored or maybe better. Yeah, almost as good as, yeah, or maybe better. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, I, I didn't see if any of them had, like, the built-in belt. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know, but, yeah, Farah, that's F-A-R-A-H, slacks. Right. And now... She was great in Charlie's Angels. Yes, she she <laughs> was. Uh, now, if the team that's bowling for you gets a turkey... Mm-hmm. Three strikes in yes, a row. three strikes in a row. Man, there was a nice uh, set there. That, uh, it was a, basically a high-end stereo set. Yeah. With a uh, spectrosonic receiver, uh, quadruplex speakers, mm-hmm. uh, a turntable. With a nice a brand-name cartridge. Yeah, like a start Epsilon or something cartridge. Yeah. yeah. Made made sure to point that out. So I'm sure that all the audio files in the audience were were drooling over that uh, yeah. that stereo setup. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know how many of these prizes are given out. The slacks. The slacks. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, and one of those lower. <laughs> yes. Uh, the bowling wasn't top tier in this episode. No. The prizes were pretty good. Yeah. But uh, you know, Angie Dickinson, like you said, she. Did pretty well. She got some strikes, and her her team picked it up in the end. Leslie Nielsen was pretty consistent. Yeah, he, he seemed like he was bowling a lot of like eights and nines. Yeah, not not really lighting up with the strikes, but he seemed to to more or less be at least be able to get the ball down the middle of the lane. Yeah, she was like James, I guess was inconsistent, but yeah, she started out with she, a gutter ball, but then like bounced back pretty well. I yeah, thought. got some spares, and yeah, she wanted a strike. She really wanted a strike. She, she did. Yes, she got close. Uh, who would be your MVP of as the celebrities? Would uh, it be Angie Dickinson? It might be Lloyd for his comeback. Yeah. He finished so that. Basically, he, he was not good at all, and then he really had a strong finish. Yeah. Uh, I I would say their team, for sure. I mean, not just because they won, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. They seem to be a little bit more... I mean, part of it is because Susan St. James' focus, yeah. and Leslie Nielsen's just kind of laid back, but the... <laughs> The Angie and Lloyd team seem to be a little bit more animated. They were maybe a little yeah. bit more fun to watch. Yeah. But it was quite a contest, and it actually it, it turned out it turns out to be a close game. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I, I don't remember the final score, but no. But I think it bowling scoring is always confusing. Yeah, there was. Um, it went. To, it did go to the tenth frame. Yeah. For what that's worth. Right. I would have liked to see them taking you know keeping track of their own score with you know. The little pencil in the, yeah. <laughs> the form. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen with a little yeah. pencil behind his ear or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that would be good. Yeah. Uh, really get some of that great bowling atmosphere in here. Yeah. They fooled me enough to I didn't realize it was a totally total studio environment. So there, I guess there was enough of that bowling atmosphere. But there's there's some things we miss out, <laughs> like the shoe rental process. Yeah. As we talked about the, the it, scorekeeping. Yeah. Didn't really see the shoes. It was hard. To... No, I was wearing. I don't think Jed Allen was wearing regulation bowling shoes. <laughs> but he wasn't exactly he wasn't bowling. Yeah, he wasn't tromping around in the lanes. Uh, yeah, very much so. Maybe there's. Uh, there might be some people out there that know more about bowling than than I do, and that would be many people. Yeah. So I don't know if the bowling. You you, you know you don't watch for the bowling. You watch for the combination, like I said, of bowling and celebrities. Yeah. And you know, also it just brings up. Bowling used to be like a just a general presence on TV. I think mm-hmm. Flintstones mm-hmm. It was part of the Honeymooners, right? Yeah, there was a, they had a bowling team that was they had bowling every week. Yeah, I'm guessing a lot of sitcoms had people on bowling teams. Yeah, I think uh, I think Ozzy Nelson was a bowler, and yeah, yeah, it was really kind of like I, I know people bowl still, but it, I feel like it was one of those sort of middle class. Yeah, things it, that people did. It was a social thing. It got people out of the house. A lot of people had their own ball. Like my dad has, 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 has my both of my parents had their own bowling balls, mm. and I think uh, later they they were on some bowling team, like the church bowling team or something. Yeah, it, there'd be leagues and like recreational leagues and, and social organizations, and that's actually, you know, I've read about this. That's one of the theories sociologists have about. How the country is so divided, partly yeah. because you don't have institutions like that are weakened now. Hmm. And the theory that goes, I forget what the name of this theory is, but the idea is that people used to have, be more active, like civically. Now they'll stay home and you know watch TV or something like that. But yeah. you would go to these bowling groups was a great opportunity to hang out with and socialize people 
of different, you know, backgrounds. So you'd talk to people. Mm-hmm. Kind of the same like a church, actually. Like church was sort of like you might have the same religion, but they'd have the religion would combine people from all different socioeconomic backgrounds. And, yeah, bowling uh, was, was kind of something that brought people together. And there's still bowling leagues and people are really into it. Yeah. But And now there's sort of like what I've seen around here in our area is sort of the rise of like appealing to younger people mm. with flashy lights and trying to make it like a hip hot spot. Right. So a lot, of, a lot of the bowling alleys around here are being renovated or the new ones that are going in are, are trying to, to appeal to an upscale crowd Yeah. and offer like fancy drinks. Right. And not I know they're same. like in some cities have that too. Like, I mean, not that we're not in a city, but like LA and New York or whatever have sort of hip bowling alleys that maybe only have five lanes or something. Yeah. But I, th- I think they're going for that. I don't know how well it's working, but yeah. You know, there's a lot of bells and whistles. It used to a bowling alley used to be sort of seedy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there'd be like a pool table in the back, or yeah. you know, a cigarette machine or two, mm-hmm. a payphone that probably doesn't exactly work. Some video games. Yeah. Arcade machines. Yeah. But now, you know, even like uh, some of the the dingier bowling alleys have like fancy like air hockey tables, and maybe the food selection will be a little bit. There'll yeah. be more options now. Right. I don't know if that's 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 one thing I guess that separates these new bowling alleys is the food. It yeah. actually aims to be edible, apparently. Yeah. Uh, I also just remember that I had only learned recently that my dad's dad was like a on a bowling team that did really well. Like they got to go to. I, I assume it was some amateur hmm. championship in Ohio and stuff. So. So what's uh, what's your bowling skill like? Not very good. Uh, can you I take Lloyd Bridges? Me, maybe. Like, the only period I really bowled was, like, kind of late high school. Uh, I probably, maybe, was, I wasn't great or at all, but, you know, I didn't take it that seriously either. Hmm. Uh, and uh, I don't you know if I've said this on the podcast podcast before, but I know, I tell you, like, the bowling alley, the nearest bowling alley to us opened up, and uh, the wrestler Paul Orndorff owned it. Ah, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think we saw him there at least once, and then Evander Holyfield was there once, hmm. just bowling by himself. I think hmm. I don't know if he was by himself. I just remember seeing him. I think he had a cool hat on. He maybe had an entourage that was yeah. keeping a respectful distance while he practiced. Right. Yeah. I, I hope he was in a league and he was bowling for his. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like on you know Wednesday night he had to, he really had to perform well or his team would lose the. He'd lose against the Hurricanes or whatever, so you had to go yeah. be out there bowling. Yeah, but I think, like, when I was in high school, I think it was also one of those things that, uh, you know, parents found acceptable to oh. go do. Right. You know, that it wasn't, they at least knew what where you were. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if bowling quite has the same cachet. It's kind of in a weird spot right now, it seems yeah. like. Yeah. Maybe it needs more celebrities. Maybe it does. I, I, well, what's this? Chris Hardwick tried to kind of revive it because he's his dad was like a professional bowler mm. so so i know he did some things like i think they were charity things but he would be like his nerdist team versus people from breaking bad and stuff like that yeah uh, he has a passion for the game yeah for the sport much like it, ernie borgnine anybody can bring it back <laughs> yeah anybody can bring yeah. chris, chris hardwick is the i've often said he's the ernie borgnine of <laughs> yeah today i could see that yeah I'm not sure how. <laughs> I might have to eat a few trays of bowling alley nachos to be uh-huh. able to see that, but yeah. eventually I probably would. Right. Have a few Pabst Blue Ribbons, <laughs> and yeah, maybe I would see that. But see, yeah, why are the bowling alley serving fancy drinks when you know cheap beer is hip too? Yeah, they could just stick with their cheap beer. And yeah, I'm. Are you kind of disappointed that the celebrities weren't visibly drinking cheap beer on camera while they were bowling? Yeah, they did. It seemed possible that they might have had something before yeah. <laughs> i don't know i mean no, nobody seemed yeah that way it just wouldn't be surprised if they had a couple of drinks to loosen them up yeah the martinis because they're basically doing live to tape and yeah i'm surprised that nobody was smoking on camera right yeah yeah you know, except for have... angie dickinson oh <laughs> <laughs> nice or susan st james <laughs> ernie borgnine yeah hey i feel like he had a cigarette like right below camera level <laughs> He didn't want to ruin his image by being caught smoking on camera. Uh, it's it's something else. There's there's it's it's a time capsule for sure. 
the yeah. whole package. The sponsors, you know, the, the fashions, just the whole vibe of it is very mid-70s. The music. Yeah, yeah, the theme song. That's it, pretty funky. Yeah, I like that. But it's funky like in an old game show way. Yeah. Yeah, and it's cool because like different, like, <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty simple melody, but uh, I guess, but the, you know, different instruments will play it and then like, yeah. a different set of instruments. There's even a part where it's basically just drums that are, or the heads are like tuned to the same notes. So Yeah. But they're just beating out to almost like a George of the Jungle sort of beat. And, uh... <laughs> and it's cool because it sounds to me like almost like it's the music that you would play like as a as a musical bed while you're talking about parting gifts. Yeah. But that's the actual the whole theme song of the whole show. <laughs> right. So they take the best part of game show music and just make it the whole theme song. Yeah. And just play that motifs of that like repeatedly. So big thumbs up for the the celebrity bowling theme song. Uh, there's a lot of other a lot of other episodes out there. Yeah. Including, I mean, should we mention some of the other ones that we've seen on there? Like, uh, we mentioned the Brady one, right? That's, yeah. Uh, is it the, Bra- the Brady kids? There's, there yes. might be two, because there's one with some Brady kids versus some Walton kids. Yeah, I, I think. think one of the DVDs is built around the Brady episodes. So I think there's okay. multiple Brady episodes on that. Yeah. Uh, I know Bob Newhart and. Yeah, William Shatner. And Hugh O'Brien. Yes. Yeah. Uh, In the same episode. Fatty Award winner Hugh O'Brien. Yeah. And they, they got a nice assortment of uh, celebrities to be on the show throughout its run. Dick Martin. From yeah, Dick Martin. Uh, Laffin, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just a, a lot of different people. Um, uh, a couple of Battle of the Network stars people. The guy that played the robot. Oh, John Shuck? Yeah, John Shuck was in a couple. <laughs> Adam West was in one. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, John Shuck seems like, seems like he'd be a good bowler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He, he might, would have brought his own ball. Yeah. He might break the pins. Yeah. <laughs> He's a robot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and that's really just on the ones that Amazon has. I, I want to say they have about... Mm, they might have about like 90 of them. 90? Really? Oh, wow. I think, because I think each season they season they have is like 28 episodes. Okay, well, that, that's more than I've seen like on... I could be wrong about that, but... Anytime I've seen them on like the free sites, I don't think I've ever seen that many episodes. Yeah. So that, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Maybe some episodes are, they couldn't get clearances or, or lost to time. Yeah. Oh. Taped over. What a shame that would be. Yeah. What a shame. But there's enough to see the celebrity bowling that's out there. Yeah. And it's only a half hour. It's a great little time capsule. It's a, it's a fun way to spend, you know, 20 some minutes, I would say. Much like going bowling. 20 minutes, you're done. 20 minutes, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you weren't uh, sandbagging yourself when you <laughs> talked about not taking bowling very seriously earlier. <laughs> no. All right. I think we're done with celebrity bowling. You think so? Yeah, I don't know if there's anything else to say about celebrity. Uh, about, uh, That's fun. We enjoyed it. Give a recommendation. And, and thanks to our, our Facebook uh, readers. Yeah. And our website readers. And, and we hope to do more things. Maybe post some things that are things we haven't covered yet. And anything we talk about, if you'd like to see us covered on the podcast please let us know and we'll definitely put it in the uh the roster if we can this episode brought to you by bicycles the already existing pedal powered vehicle this episode also brought to you by ferris slacks plaid isn't just for scots and lumberjacks anymore this episode also brought to you by the national bowling council one of the white consolidated industries You know that Pine Sol liquid cleans up dirt. Pine Sol. You know that Pine Sol cleans up grease. Pine Sol. And you know that Pine Sol kills household germs that can cause odors and leaves a fresh, clean scent. Pine Sol. But here's one thing about Pine Sol you may not know. Pine Sol. Pine Sol stops mold and mildew and their odors. Pine Sol. Pine Sol's more than just a cleaner. It's a cleaner disinfectant that cleans, disinfects, and deodorizes. Pine Sol. Okay, and now we're going to do a little segment we like to call Pick Your Pine. One of my favorite games. A game where, based on genius Robert Pine, Mm -hmm. show favorite from season one, Mm -hmm. basically I use the IMDb working with uh, feature to, to look up actors who've appeared on other episodes of our show and see if they've acted in something with Robert Pine. And then I quiz Rick and see if he can guess. Yes. And the, uh, uh, for the record, I have not been preparing. It's tempting. 
for me to, to study the, the career of Robert Pine, but I do it as stuff comes to me. I don't, I have not been preparing. I do not cheat by looking at the resume of Robert Pine at a time. Yeah. All right. So we've got two, traditional two. I'm going to start with Norman Fell from Three's Company. Ooh. Another beloved character actor. You, you figure they cross paths. It would make sense. And sure enough, uh, they did. So here we go. Were they together in A, Three's Company? Hmm. B, Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke, wow. Or C, Dan August. Dan August. The rare uh, Burt Reynolds vehicle, I believe. That's correct. Wow. Okay, so are we going to... You want me to guess this one and then we'll move on to the next yeah. one, correct? Okay. Yeah. Norman Fell and Robert Pine on Three's Company. Uh, to step outside like my normal thinking for this, I'm going to say that Norman Fell and Robert Pine were not in a Three's Company episode because if so, at least one of us would have somehow seen this by now. <laughs> it's possible that I saw it just didn't know appreciate the genius of Robert Pine at the time. Yeah. I'm going to rule that one out. Pro- and probably there's a lot of chips overlap there too. Where... Yes. Uh... Gunsmoke and Dan August. Okay, I can, I can easily see Norman Fell being on an episode of Dan August, or Gunsmoke. Robert Pine seems a little young for Gunsmoke, but then again, Gunsmoke was on about fifty-five years, so it went well into the the late '60s mm-hmm. and early '70s. So, uh, Robert Pine, as we know, was in uh, Munster Go Home, theatrical movie in the mid '60s. He could have been. Uh, on Gunsmoke, uh, testing his hand, maybe as a as a young gunslinger, and Norman Fell would be the cynical bartender, maybe. Yeah. Dan August, I don't know much about that show except that it has Burt Reynolds, and that's probably enough to know mm. about any show. Norman Fell was in you know a lot of cop materials. I could I could see that too. I'm tempted to say. I'm tempted to say Dan August because uh, that makes sense, but. Gunsmoke, it just seems like, how could you make that up? I'm going to go, Norman Fell and Robert Pine appeared in Gunsmoke. Incorrect. Oh! Robert Pine did appear in Gunsmoke. And it's possible Norman Fell appeared on a different episode, but not together. Not together. Oh, man. Dan August. Wow, Dan August. And here's, i got to look it up again. Yeah, what? what? Dan August, Norman Fell was clearly a regular on Dan August. Oh. Because he was in 26 episodes. Oh. My ignorance of the show cost me in Pick Your Pine today. Mm. Yeah. And, of course, Bert, you mentioned, and another alum show, the recently passed Richard Anderson. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. He was a regular, you think, or he was in the same episode? Yeah, 26 episodes. Wow. And then a lot of other recognizable people. (laughs) Hmm. Dabney Coleman. Ooh. Uh, Yeah, all sorts of people. Ricardo Multibon. Oh. Vic Morrow, Tim O'Connor from Buck Rogers. Boy, this might be another file for what we want to see, what That's, we'd like to see. It's been on uh, Git TV. Oh yeah. I don't know if it still is, and I don't, I don't get get t- I don't get get TV, but yeah, uh, they were showing it for a while. <laughs> the uh, so it's out there. Guy from Star Trek with the black and white face. Is uh? Or are there more than one black and white face? Yeah, didn't uh, Frank Gorshin did that? Uh, yeah, it's not Frank. It's Lou Antonio, but his his picture is a black and white face. Oh, okay. Oh, it went I away. think he was the guy. Well, anyway, he was there. So, so do you have anything on Robert Pine and Dan August, like a, a character name at least? Uh, yeah. Maybe that'll f- tell us a lot about his character. It. Oh, the mixture was in it. Man, Dan August. How did this show not last more than 26 episodes? I don't know. And I think it was maybe, was it part of like a, one of the, oh, the like wheels? A wheel thing? I, I don't yeah. know. Martin Sheen. Charles Nelson Riley, Dom DeLuise. <laughs> Donna Mills. Let's see. Uh, I might have to go to Robert Pine's page and look it up. Jan Michael Vincent. Charles Billy D. Durning, Williams. Ossie Davis. <laughs> Elizabeth Ashley. Yeah, let me go to Pine. Well, I'm 
a little ashamed of losing at Pick Your Pine, but the important well, thing is I had a good fun time playing it, as always. Yeah. It was now, a tough one. Our Pine has such a storied career that it takes a long time to scroll through this. I, I can imagine. <laughs> yes. Okay, here I went too far, actually. <laughs> so, Robert we played Pine. Pete O'Connell in episode 21. Hmm. Pete, Pete O'Connell. O'Connell. Uh, do you think he was on the right side of the law, or do you think he was like a, a street hustler of some kind? Ooh. Maybe a perp. It could have been anything. Yeah. He could have. Like, that was probably that age where he was still playing, like, you know. He wasn't grizzled yet. Right. He wasn't playing, you know, authority figures. Uh, sort of callow youths, I think. Yeah. He referred to himself playing. Huh. <laughs> but I, uh, now I'm questioning the, the, the gun smoke thing. Uh-oh. No, there it is. Okay. 1973. He was on it like four times. Wow. 68, 69, 70, and 73. Oh, he was a, a favorite of the show. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, the next one I got. Okay, Let's, I'm gonna try to recover. And this that. one is a little outside the norm. One because we know one thing that they were in together. Okay, but that's not. Yeah. Okay. It, also, the things you're guessing are not TV shows, but they're movies. Ooh, movies. Theatrical movies. Okay, we'll, we'll accept it for Robert yeah. Pine. So the, the uh, person is Jonathan Hillerman from Magnum PI, uh. and of course they were on an episode of Magnum PI. That I wrote about on our website, battleofthenetworkshows.com. Thank you. So, Jonathan Hillman played Higgins. Here we go. Okay. Were they in Up the Creek? Up the Creek. Day of the Locust. Day of the Locust. Or One Little Indian. Up the Creek. Day of the Locust. One Little Indian. Boy, Day of the Locust is one of those movies I think I always meant to see and never did, and I'm paying for it now. <laughs> up the Creek, I can't remember. I'm, I'm mixing that up somehow with Up the Academy. <laughs> <laughs> one Little Indian, I don't know that one. Is that an Agatha Christie uh, of some kind? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have a lot of intelligent commentary on this one, unlike my brilliant breakdown of the uh, Norman Fell connection. So mm-hmm. I will say... I'm going to go with C, One Little Indian. Incorrect. Oh! Robert Pine was in that. That's a Western of some kind. Uh, it's Day of the Locust. Oh. Now, listen to this cast. Yes. Donald Sutherland as Homer Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Car- Karen Black. It's Marge Simpson? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Burgess Meredith as Grandpa Simpson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> William Atherton. William Atherton is uh, Fat Joe. (laughs) Geraldine Page, Richard Dysart. Fat uh, Tony, I should have said. Yeah. (laughs) Billy Barty, Jackie Earl Haley. uh, Is Nelson. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Billy Barty is is, uh, Maggie. Uh, wait, uh, I'm skipping a lot of people at this point, but I assume Madge Kennedy is someone, but mm. John War Eagle, mm. uh, John, John of the Hellman, of course, Paul Stewart, I don't know who that is, uh, Granger Hines, I don't know who that is, but that's a cool name, <laughs> DeForest Coven. There's that's more than one actor named DeForest. Yeah, that's another good name there. Robert Pine is Apprentice. Hmm. Uh, David Ladd. Okay. You know, uh, part of the Alan Ladd's family. Former husband of Cheryl Ladd. Mm-hmm. And listed very last. This will really be up your alley. Dick Powell Jr. Whoa. As Dick Powell. Oh, man. <laughs> How have I not seen this movie? <laughs> Dick Powell Jr. as Dick Powell. That's yeah. great. An art director in the 1930s falls in love and attempts to make a young woman an actress despite Hollywood, who wants nothing to do with her because of her problems with an estranged man and her alcoholic father. It's not based, based in a novel. Nathaniel West. Nathaniel West, yeah. Famous novel. I haven't read the novel either. Yeah, it's this... Uh, 
a big production based on a, a lit literary piece, and we pretty much lost it at Donald right. Sutherland as Homer Simpson <laughs> and didn't recover. <laughs> Directed by John Schlesinger. Hmm. He's somebody, right? Yeah, he did like uh, Midnight Cowboy. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think he did an episode of The Simpsons, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> the monorail episode, maybe. right? <laughs> Uh, so there you go. Pick your pine. I I picked my pine and I picked wrong, but well, you know, with with that many choices, and the you know those three actors have just been in so many things. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's tough. Uh, and picking the clues, like I didn't, you know, Jonathan Hillerman, the first movie that comes to mind is Blazing Saddles, but mm. you know, I, I knew you would know that Robert Pine's not in Blazing Saddles. Yeah, although I kind of feel like after appreciating Robert Pine more, I need to go back and watch every movie that's ever been made and every TV show <laughs> in the, on the chance that Robert Pine might be in it, and I just right. missed it the first time around. I could so happen. I've got a lot of rewatching to do. Yeah. So really, I feel like a winner for being exposed to Dan August and Day of the Locust, yeah. movies I, that I, and TV shows that I need to watch. I feel like seeing both of those. Yeah. I don't know if that's possible, but maybe we can but find Maybe a way. Day of the Locust will be on TCM at some point. Yeah. It doesn't sound like he's a big role, but uh, but he's there. So. Well, the the part's never small when, yeah. when Robert Pine's involved. Right. The and actor is not I don't, I don't know, something like that. Seeing Donald Sutherland play Homer Simpson. <laughs> yeah, that's worth the price of admission alone. <laughs> uh, all righty. Pick your pine. Pine song. Join us next time for another exciting episode of Battle of the Network Shows. Learn more, leave feedback, and suggest future episodes at BattleTheNetworkShows.com. Follow us on Twitter at BatNetShows, and like our Facebook page, Facebook.com slash BattleTheNetworkShows. Faye Greener. She wanted more than stardom. She wanted to live her dreams. I need pictures. Only extra work now, but I haven't had a real chance yet. William Atherton is Todd Hackett. He loved Faye enough to believe in her fantasy. I like you a lot. I love you. Don't make me hurt you. You're very kind and clever, but I could only let a really rich man love me. I could only love someone criminally handsome. Donald Sutherland is Homer Simpson, who would do anything to make her dreams come true. I'm going to be a big star someday. It's the only thing in the world I want. It's good to know what you want. <laughs> you know, I always wonder what the point was of Homer Simpson. He's not Rockefeller. Okay, well, he's not. He respects me. <laughs> and he doesn't want anything. Forgive me for such unworthy thoughts, but sometimes I wish I could tear it all down. Some guests on Celebrity Voting receive a selection of Habit Zippy paneling, the look and feel of Weather A's barn siding. It's the New England Barn Board series by Habit Zippy. It looks and feels like real. Plus, a supply of Turtle Wax, the car care expert, featuring the Turtle Wax self-polishing face wax kit with a professionally designed applicator. And Castrol GTX to keep your car running smooth. The motor oil of champions for all models and sizes of cars. Castrol, it's 75th year.